Well, we're picking up from right where we left off last week. Which was somewhat of a mess. Mmm. Well, there were some problems that came up with the first attempt at doing the cement scenery out here. Yes, and I wanted to sit down and ball. Oh, man. It all, fortunately, I didn't really have to tear it off. It just sort of fell down on its own. So I'm doing it over. Right. Well, I definitely like the way it's going right now. Quite often, the second go-around comes out better. You learn lessons with mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had some mistakes to learn from. Oh my gosh, haven't we? Haven't we just. Uh, one of the lessons learned here is, first of all, use very fresh mortar. Exactly. And also to uh, put it on here very, very thick. And then also, uh, this time, we're securing it in place with um, Gorilla Glue. Right. We talked about that last week, but I'm covering over the foam with Gorilla Glue, which is water activated, and it really helps the, the mortar mix stick to the, uh, to the, st the styrene, extruded styrene insulation underneath it. Right. Well, right about then, I was afraid the whole thing was going like, to like, fall down in a big goober. <laughs> and, and one of the problems with putting it on really thick is it does. It wants to slump all the way down. When you're putting it on thin, it kind of stays where you put it. And when you put it on thick, you can just kind of stand back and watch it head for the ground. It's a landslide. It's a landslide. You know, looking at this, so I sure miss the warm weather. Right, I wish it was like this again. It will be soon. It will be soon. We did all of this uh, in late fall, trying to beat the snow and get as much done as we possibly could before the whole thing was shut down by lousy weather. Well, so far it looks very nice. I like it. Yeah, again, this, this go round, I'm, I'm much more happy. I am too. It looks great. It looks great. And you'll notice there there's a crack. And no matter what I do, it does seem to crack. But as long as it's well secured in place, well, rocks crack. Exactly. I was just going to say I've seen that same phenomenon in real rock. Sure. So it's not a problem unless it falls down. Yep. This week, one of the, the big things we're working on are the retaining walls. Right. And this one is the great big huge retaining wall. I'm calling it the China Wall. Uh-huh. Not named after the wall in China, but named after that huge retaining wall at Donner's Summit. Well, that thing's huge. And beautiful. Oh, yes. So I'm kind of trying to imitate what was done in 1868 up there. Ooh. So the first step was to cut out a foam core template so that it properly fits the space and then I traced that onto some OSB and then cut that out with my jigsaw. Which sometimes is not that easy with wafer board. Yeah, it's pretty rugged stuff. It is. Then I have layer that over with this wire. Right. It's made for doing exactly what we're doing, for reinforcing mortar and cement work and that sort of thing. It's sharp. Yes. And a little tricky to work with, so I'm using gloves and long sleeves because I didn't want to, you know, have a self-sacrifice here. I just wanted to cut the wire out. Exactly. <laughs> into the shape of the wall. <laughs> and then put that onto the, the OSB, and then I can screw the whole thing in place with grabber screws so that while I'm working, I can take the whole thing down to work on it. So I, I fashioned the left side first and then came back and cut out a shape that will fit over to the right side. And now I'm ready to layer that over with mortar mix. Oh, uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Boy, again. But I'm thinking that with the wire in there reinforcing it, this, this should really be strong. It should. There's also these two walls. They're the abutment walls that will hold up the bridge. I'm still trying to figure out what the bridge is gonna look like. But I do know that I want to have abutment walls at both ends. And I'm using a, an all-weather rated plywood here, a pressure-treated plywood, uh, just, just to help make sure. And those supports in there hold up the track when the track is in place. But that's where the bridge will ultimately replace that, and these abutments will hold up the bridge. So same technique here. I'm layering over the uh, pressure-treated plywood with wire and stapling that in place. 
So with uh, a certain amount of trepidation, I'm ready to spread the mortar mix on here. Uh, once again, hoping that I don't get some sort of failure because, there, well, there's a history of things screwing up. All oh, right, and I see that you're doing it laying it flat. Now, I was thinking you were going to put it in place first and then attempt this. Well, and I'm doing that with the large wall, and that makes it 10 times more complicated. This is so much simpler that I can lay this flat and then smear this stuff on here. Ah. Sort of looks like cake icing or something. Something. You could just let your imagination run wild on that one. Boy, don't let it run too wild. Right. Well, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, unfortunately, uh, as always, I made a small mistake. It worked out okay. But I kept reminding myself, no, thicker, thicker, thicker is better. And uh, so what did I do? I spread it on here way too thin. Oh, dear. But because of the wire, it, it held up quite well and turned out okay but it would have turned out so much better if I'd have put this on thicker. And then before attempting to carve any sort of uh, stonework in there, really trying to get it as smooth as humanly possible. Well, I wouldn't think you'd want it too smooth because rocks are not smooth. Right, don't want it to look like a cement wall. Right, brick wall. Brick wall. So a little, a little irregularity is probably just fine. So you can see that, well, frankly, I just made this one a little too thin. Well, and imagine when you're trying to carve the little lines in, you'll run into the metal grid underneath. And that's exactly what happened. Oh dear. And so the second one I made much, much, much thicker, and boy, did that work out better to the point where I thought, you know, I'll probably end up tearing the first one apart and starting over. But then, once I saw it in place and, and finished, uh, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. It's good enough. So you can see right there how thick the second one is. Right, now I want to see how you get those rock shapes in there. Okay, well, I uh, start with the the thinner one, mm. and boy, and this you can see what's happened. As soon as I press in there, I'm using a wood chisel. A wood chisel, okay. And then as soon as I press the mortar lines in there, it goes in that far and it hits the wire. Oh. So watch here as I try to press this in, and there it is. That's that's as deep as it'll go. Oh. And that's where I really wished I'd have done it thicker. Right. I guess that's what you call trowel and error. Ooh. So there's the thinner one all laid out with the, the mortar lines and everything. And I thought, you know, it looks okay. It does. But I have a funny feeling it's when it's dry, it's going to want to fall apart. Oh, I hope not. Well, it didn't. Oh. It dried and it was just fine. But I, the, the thicker one turned out so much better. Look mm, at that. Yes, you can push down farther. And so I can do a much cleaner job of carving into it with the wood chisel. And that's when I thought, you know, I think I'll just end up tearing that other one apart. But life is short and the project needs to work on. <laughs> so I said, you know, as much as I like this one more, it's all part of that great learning curve, isn't it? Right. So this one turned out really nice and the other one turned out okay. It's okay. So there they are dry, and boy are they strong. Oh, that is just really neat though, I like that. The wire really reinforces them, and this one I thought was just gonna fall apart, and the edges did crumble a little bit, but I, I thought, you know what, it's okay. I think so. It's okay, and I'll just go ahead and use it just like it is. So now, to secure them in place. And I thought uh, right from the outset that I can probably just glue these in place with some sort of a construction adhesive. And somebody here on the channel suggested this PL375 by Loctite. It's designed for all weather and it's supposed to be really good. And as it happens, yeah, it's really good. Well, that's neat. So I put a good coating of that on the back of the retaining wall. And in this case, I secured that in place with one of the wood blocks that normally hold up the track. <laughs> and just put a grabber screw down through there temporarily to hold it in place while the glue dries. And yeah, once the glue dried, uh, other than it could potentially rip the whole roofing material off, but no, it's really on there strong. It's, it's not going anywhere. And then on the other side, 
I, it wanted to tip over forward. So what I did is I secured that in place with a grabber screw and a great big washer. Right. Now onto the huge wall, the china wall, and that has to be built in place. Oh my. And that adds, uh, let's call it complexity. I can see that. <laughs> so I, I have to kind of take the mortar mix and throw that into place and try to embed it down into the wire and then really press it down into the wire. Otherwise it just wants to fall completely off of there. Right. And again, uh, lesson learned on the other walls, this needs to go on as thick as I can get it and getting it on there at all is proving to be a trick. But there it is ready to be carved and that's actually about a half inch, three quarters of an inch thick. Right. And that's gonna work out really well, I think. I guess, that's what you call mudslinging. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep politics out of this. <laughs> so it's ready for carving. I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm using a couple of old wood chisels here to just press in almost all the way down to the wire and in a few places all the way down to the wire, but just kind of pressing in there to get a good mortar line. And then in places where I inevitably screw up and cut into what I want to be stone, I can actually come in with the edge of the chisel and repair that. So it's not just pressing in mortar lines, it's also uh, repairing damage that you do by carving in the mortar line. But right. there it is, and it's looking, I think, pretty good. It does, and I think that beveled edge on that chisel helps, helps to add the, you know, the shape of the rock. It works great. Right. I couldn't have found a better tool. Right. Ultimately, there's going to be a mine building here. Right, and that should just tie in nicely. It looks, you know, it's tying in really well with the existing stonework. I'm, right. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I'm, I'm know, pleased. Third time's the charm. Well, let's hope so. <laughs> And once this dried, I'm always concerned now that something's gonna break or crack or fall off, and no, it's perfect. Oh, good. It's strong and it looks good, and I'm, I'm really happy with the finished look and ready to move on to something else. Right, I'm happy with it. So there's a pipe sticking up out of there. What are we gonna do about that? Yeah, the electrical conduit. And going into this, I, I had a plan, but you know, sometimes plans fail. Mm -hmm. Best laid plans of mice and men. So my original thinking here was that I wanna do rock work above the tunnel portal. Oh. But I don't have a lot of space there because the door has to be able to slide up out of there. And so it has to go on really thin. So first things first, really douse the whole area down because this stuff only sticks uh, to a previous layer when it's really wet. And I assumed that that would help it stick to the cinder block up there because there's no wire, there's no anything. I just need to trowel mortar mix right up there. Yes, and that's where I got nervous. But you know, it loves to stick to cinder block. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. So this first... Uh, section that I did here it it went up there and it went up there quite easily and I had to be really careful that it didn't get down into the gap at the top where the door comes out but I was able to do that and then it also wraps around the conduit really really oh, well look at that. so I kind of built this up to this far and now it's like ah, now where do I yeah but I'm sort of thinking uh, to come back here now and do sort of a Southern Utah approach to having a big balanced rock up there or something. Right, you could do that or a, a tree of some kind of I proportions. Thought, yeah, there, we need to do some sperimenting and figure out how to cover up the rest of that because that looks a mess. How about one of those cell phone towers that looks like a pine tree? Ye no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, they're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> and you know, they all look like cell phone towers that look like a tree. Exactly. <laughs> they're not fooling anybody. Well, anyway, it's it's turning out quite nice. It's drying hard. Everything's working fine. The, the part up at the top that's stuck to the cinder block is quite well stuck in there. And I think we're ready to move on to the next part, which is building out the hill below the tracks with some more of that extruded styrene foam. 
and uh, building up this area. Oh, yeah. But I also think that's going to be next week's show. Exactly. <laughs> time, time to move on and do something else. But you do want to follow up on this because look where we're headed. Oh, yes. It, it actually turned out pretty good. Right. And as we mentioned before, all of this was done last fall, and we were racing like crazy to get it done before, well before the snow fell. It, it, isn't that Donner's Summit? <laughs> well, as, as a matter of fact, it is. We're right there at the China Wall, aren't we? Exactly. That's what it reminds me of. Only it's Donner's Summit mixed with Southern Utah. There you go. <laughs> Anyway, as we were saying, you don't want to miss any of this, so you want to make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. And the very easy way to become a subscriber to the channel is by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye bye. Bye.